but haven't. Okay. Now, what about the Mana Party? Um, Labor seems to, I don't know, is hate too strong a word? I don't know. Oh, no, we Terribly, <laughs> terribly dismissive of the Mana Party, and you're totally ruling uh, Hone Harua out, or, oh, and, and the Mana Party out of any um, post-election involvement, as if they are as bad as, in your view, as uh, the ACT Party, etc. Um, we have ruled them out of a coalition, yeah. I suppose, because we've had more experience um, with Hone, and it'll be interesting mm. to see who he who brings in, if he mm. brings others in. And we have had experience of of, of Hone and uh, some of the things he does and says, mm. colourful and interesting yeah. and amusing, but um, not always um, we believe um, right. Uh, but I think um, Mana Party comes in; they bring people in. There would be an ability to work with them. We said we won't go into coalition with them. So There's no doubt we'd work on particular sure. uh, policies because um, where they agree with us and we agree with them, there would be mm. no doubt that mm. we'd end up voting on the same side. Okay, because I have to say, I keep hearing from a lot of people saying, isn't that strange? Why aren't Labour willing to work with this left-wing party? Is it, well, look, I sort of do we know that they're left-wing? Do we know what they really are at this point? Yeah. I mean, all I, I've, all I know really is uh, what Hone thinks and, and we have seen a little bit of John Minto, but I don't really know what they're going to be at the moment, and is it going to be a broad-based party? Is it going to be a party in opposition to the Maori Party? Yeah. And I well, kind of get the feeling, when you see the response from the Maori Party to Mana, that they see it as a as um, a big threat to them sure. in terms of Maori vote. Well, I mean, you've asked some interesting questions about Mana. Very good questions. Can you answer any of them? No, I can't. I mean, we've got to wait and see. I think I'm, we're so, all watching to see what is the Mana Party list. What yeah. is, what's happening with the Mana Party? And I, I actually think it's it's also interesting to ask what's happening to the Māori Party. Yeah. Because I was at the Māori Women's Welfare League um, on Wednesday. Hundreds of Māori women, a fantastic organisation. Yeah. Hana Tamaki was there and so was okay. her husband, <laughs> along with lots of black-shirted uh, men in mm -hmm. sunglasses. Um, but the Māori Party were very much uh, on the back foot put constantly when they were speaking, telling people to vote for the Māori Party. I think they so, are very worried so of the in, impact of Labour yeah. and, and of, the, of the Māna Party. So you think they're in demise? Do you think the, their future yeah. is uncertain? or what's Well, I, I, do, I do believe that, that we will take two of those seats mm. and retain two of ours. I think, I think in Tito, Tito Tonga that mm. um, Reno Turakatani mm. has a very good chance of winning. He is mm. very uh, well known, well connected. Naitahu, he's mm. um, been, he's worked in Christchurch, he's worked in lots of Māori okay. organisations, and he knows that the place to get your vote is Wellington. Most of the vote mm. for I Tito Tonga is right. Wellington. Sure. I also think that um, that Shane Jones will do very well mm. in Tamaki Makara. Mm. I think that uh, that Peter has mm. kind of lost his mojo, okay. um, and and he's. I think he's finding politics a struggle these days. Yeah, okay. I think we've got some more questions over here, and I'm hoping there's some from the audience. Uh, look very shy. Yeah. Uh, oh, we've got a question I'm, here I'm from the local Labour candidate. Oh, so, oh, very um, good. But as you know, Annette, I'm getting into politics because I'm concerned about the gap between rich and poor. Um, when I got the opportunity to do the spoke chat, our policy um, was not yet very well known about uh, in terms of the first $5,000 tax free um, and how that will affect students and also um, the capital gains tax, you know, creating a fairer um, tax system. I wondered whether you might like to say a bit about this, because I think it's, it's particularly important for this audience. But not the big long speech, oh, okay. about it, just the very short well, one. Well, the short, the short answer is that we have a very unfair tax system. We have a tax system that has <coughs> rewarded those with the most in the, in the last couple of years and has penalised those who have the least, and we've set about to address those issues um, with our capital gains tax, tax-free zone, um, GST of fresh fruit and vegetables. Uh, but also, I think what's really important is going to be when we release the details of our policy for children in New Zealand, mm. because one of our great concerns is uh, children living in poverty in this country, um, and that is more than income. It goes across a whole lot of, of social policy areas from health to income, to ability mm. to care for children, right through to housing okay. and so on. And you will, you will hear more about that later, so I won't go okay. on. Okay, <laughs> we've got another question from Nikki. Um, just a question about student loan payments. And we heard about this from Hone yesterday when he said that he thinks tertiary education should be free for everybody. But um, the question here is, um, what are your thoughts on Winston's policy on dollar for dollar matching on student loan payments? Um, uh, we, 
Was, what was the question? Like, what, what do you think about student loans and tertiary education? And yes, student debt student burden? loans. I mean, we um, we su we support um, interest off student loans, and we continue to do that. Um, our, I think it's fair to say our, our tertiary policy will be uh, pretty similar to what we've had um, in the past, and it's fair to say that Which our... Which will be bringing back a universal student it, it's been, um, that is allowance? Part, yes, student, universal student allowance phased in as we, as we can. Um, but, but I'd have to be uh, fair to say that the first expenditure of, of education funding has to be, in my view, in the next three years, is for our younger citizens, children in early childhood education because um, we are seeing some massive cuts for um, children in early childhood education at the moment. We just went to Polyfest you're having here in, in uh, Dunedin and one of the first things that was said to me was the, the cuts in early childhood education that are affecting those the kindergartens, that mm -hmm. those that are in community organisations. And why would we not want to give our younger citizens the best start in life mm -hmm. by them having free education? Okay, any other questions from the audience? Um, we've got a question down here. I'm um, just wondering, is uh, climate change policy a, um, a priority for Labour in this year's election? Well, we know yes. the answer to that, yeah, don't we? Yeah, it is, yeah, but yeah. so give us some sense of how much of a priority it is. Well, in fact, um, I, th I think we've, you've got Charles Chevelle coming down here very soon, and uh, Charles has been driving our policy post-election. He, he went to Copenhagen. He has yep. been a regular attender to uh, climate change conferences. Obviously, it's, a, it's an issue of, of concern to Labor, and I would not want it to be thought that this is just a green issue. This is an issue that we've put a lot of effort and energy and policy work behind. Okay, um, because we've had this complaint um, that the Greens are encroaching on your territory, um, so do you think that's a bit of a, a difficulty between the two parties that you might be encroaching on their territory if you're taking up climate change issues too much? Well, we, we took up climate change issues quite a long time ago, actually, okay. if you recall. Yep. Uh, so so I, don't, I don't think the environment and, uh, issues and um, climate change issues okay. belong to any particular party. Okay. Um, you know, the National Party would say that they are terribly interested in it. It okay. might, just might not be doing what we might want them to do, but yeah. that they, those issues are of concern to New Zealand, aren't they? Yeah. And particularly, I think, to, to younger generations who um, look out and wonder what's going to be there for them. Okay, someone in the Twitter audience has asked me um, to ask you about lignite mining. Do you support a moratorium on it? Yes, we do. So the Labour Party supports a moratorium? Yes, we have already announced that. Okay, very good. Uh, a question in the audience from this young man? Yeah, uh, just um, if uh, Winston Peters gets back in and you guys are in sort of a position to make a coalition or something with them, do you, would you guys be reluctant to do that? Or No, we've said that we would talk, if, if Winston's party gets back in, we would talk to him after the election, we would see what we had in common, we would see what we could agree on. And I suppose we've had the, um, the opportunity to see what it's like to work with Winston because between 2005 and 2008 we were in coalition with him, or we had a coalition um, a, com a confidence and supply agreement with, with Winston. Um, from my experience dealing with um, members of his party, uh, I found them to be to work well with us, to be honourable and to undertake to do what they said they would do. But we didn't gr agree on everything. And there were many things we disagreed on. Okay, very good. Now, another question I've been told to ask you. Does Helen Clark still run the Labour Party? <laughs> because no, I think a lot of people think this. It's not. Uh, um, what are they based on? Do you think? Um, the fact that she was so powerfully controlling the Labour Party during the last fifteen years prior to two thousand and nine, um, and this idea that uh, you know, I don't know really entirely, yeah. but um, no, she, no the, the short answer is no, no, Bryce. She doesn't. Yeah. But she is a personal friend of a lot of us. Yeah. She's a personal well, friend of mine. What, that's and what people are really getting at, yeah. that she doesn't control them in any official capacity, but is she sort of um, giving some sort of hints and directions and uh, you know, <laughs> strategies? Does she tell you what you should no, do? No, she certainly does not. Well, not and she, tell you, and she, she, and she never told me when I was a minister either. I think people can sometimes get the wrong mm. view of her. I was Minister of Health for six years. She had been the Minister of Health. Mm. She trusted me to implement our policy, and we went in with a really strong policy. I knew what we needed to do. 
and I implemented it. She did not interfere and tell me what to do. She is a personal friend of quite a mm. number of us, mm. and it would be mad to think that we wouldn't still have contact mm. with her. I was at her mother's funeral uh, last Monday, okay. as, as a large number of colleagues were. So it, it goes beyond just politics. It mm. goes beyond friendships. And so the fact that, that uh, I hear from her with an email, perhaps every fortnight, mm. just as I hear from many people. Does she text you as well? Uh, yeah, she, when she's in New Zealand, she texts me. She'll say, um, um, I'm in the car, do you want to give me a call? And we'll yak about everything. We've, we've got a lot in common in terms of our families and our parents. Mm. And we often just talk about things that have nothing to do with politics. Okay. Now, you seem to be pretty up on social media and um, you use Twitter a fair bit, don't you? Yes. And um, I think that's how I met you. Yeah, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps um, on Twitter. That's right. So, I did. I didn't like something you said. That's right. I, I, you've, you've contacted me a number but I tell of times. You, I tell you where it's been really useful. Um, there was a person who didn't like me very much on Twitter who used to say um, some things that were a bit mean. So yeah. I'd reply to them. Okay. And I kept replying, and I kept explaining, and kept talking. And the other day he tweeted that he'd like to have one of my hoardings on his property. Wow. So there you are, there's success. So that's your social media strategy, <laughs> to um, neutralise opponents? No. Or, I mean, I'm just wondering why... No. Well, why it, well you won, yes. That, yeah. I, it didn't start out as that. I, I don't know, there's I mean, something about Twitter I, I like. I enjoy reading um, most other people's tweets, except I do get a bit bored by people who are saying they're eating another pie for lunch or yeah. something. But, but I do, I do enjoy people's. Um, but that's people's the cliche comments. about Twitter, isn't it? Yeah. The, but there, there are is, some that oh, do no, that. it's true. It's yeah. true. But there is more to it. Than oh, Twitter. absolutely. Because you most know, students I, I talk to, by the way, they think Twitter. Oh, yeah, it's just all this pie eating stuff. No, it's not. Um, and that um, they're all on Facebook. <laughs> Facebook is for children and Twitter is for adults. Yeah. Oh, which well, a lot of um, us took quite a I quite like both to. of them actually. Yeah. But, but which one do you use most? Um, I'd use Twitter more than Facebook. Um, although I put s stuff on, up on Facebook every day, and yeah. no doubt David Clark will have photographs of, of you and me together that we can put up and <laughs> say that we've, we've you know, come to agreement on something. Okay. Um, but I do, I do love um, reading what other people say. But the other thing that, that maybe students don't realise is you can actually get news before it appears anywhere else. Yeah. And, it, and it'll pop up on Twitter, and, and you click onto it, and you've found out something that hasn't yet mm. hit the airwaves or the television, um, okay. and, and that, that is... So it really is an interactive thing. It's not just you broadcasting your no. party propaganda. No, actually... in, fact, in, in fact, I don't do much party propaganda. I do, I do take exception to some things that are said, mm. and, and I'll answer those. Mm. Um, and, and when you get people like Whale Oil or mm. um, you know, those that just talk absolute crap, then I feel obliged to, to put some response back in. But that usually ends up by um, to making him more manic, and you end up with 10 call, um, tw tweets from him on something. So <laughs> probably I've learnt my lesson to just ignore someone like him. OK. 